Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sophie. I'm Officer Blackaden. I'm G. Uh, I'm G. Yeah. <laughs> um, and today we are going to do the five reasons you shouldn't mess with the USA. So I reckon you could get more than five, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. yeah, I know Officer like they've got like a very very good military. Yeah. Probably one of one of the best in the world. Um, but yeah, I don't know the reasons why you won't mess with them. Well, like I don't, I don't, I don't know why you'd want to. You'd get demolished, yes. to be honest. I've been, I've been pulled up by the police when I lived in uh, New Jersey. And it's scary. Over here. Yeah. It's calm and relaxed. Yeah, the, the they police... just come over and they're like, Hiya, mate. Yeah, yeah, they come up behind you, they flash you, or they pull in front of you and they have a thing that says, please follow me, and then they pull off onto a road. You Did they? Yeah, they don't yeah. like that. No, I've never been pulled over. Yeah, I've never they, been they pulled over, but I've seen that before. Yeah, they pull in front of you and then a light at the bottom says, follow me. You have to follow the police officer Ooh. to a side road. And um, then he tells you what he's pulled you over for, but it's all quite calm. Yeah. Whereas in the US, in the US I, I <laughs> got on the floor. It wasn't Hands quite up. like that. But <laughs> it was like literally flashing behind me, pulled, pulled over, and I was just ready to get out. Mom, hands on the wheel. So you're like, yeah, oh, it was so annoying. <laughs> it was... I guess the thing is, they don't know what. To expect, so you know. Yeah, yeah but like, you, yeah, but then you don't you you don't even know what to expect at no, that point. No, no, no. Mm. But the same, not they have to there, protect you know, themselves, and because you know a lot of people carry guns, they don't want to be you know all of nicey course. pie and then get shot in the face. Yeah. Whereas so, over here, they just walk up to your window and like, hi. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So more reasonable. And they approach you mm. a lot more. N kinder, yeah, nicer. Yeah, Hi, yeah. how are you? How's your day? Oh, like, really? The reason I pulled you over? No, it, it, over here. If oh, right. Yeah, I was yeah. Saying, was like, yeah. Realistically, I think every police officer in England would probably be reasonable if, like, if you're reasonable with them. Yeah. Like, yes. If you start acting like a like a bit of a knob, yeah, then they will. Yeah, they're yeah. That's the only yeah. time they probably would. Yeah. 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 But, but then, the, but then the in American... Americans, I feel like they just start acting like a knob before they even speak to you. Yeah, because they, they, I guess they've got to protect themselves. It's just very more fun. Yeah, mostly over here, you're not you're not gonna get shot. Whereas they are more likely to get shot, but I, yeah. as you know, I get nervous and laugh. So what well, were you just laughing in this police officer's face? <laughs> Hands on the wheel. Also, <laughs> <laughs> and then he Everything's said, fine. And then he said to me, "Can I uh, see your driver's license?" And I still had my British license at the time, which it's changed now. Now it's like credit cards size but back then it was folded into a wallet and when you opened it it was like, like, it's like it's it. the map. so, so we, he kind of opened it and went drive safely ma'am yeah. <laughs> well, no well, I'm not dealing with that today <laughs> yeah anyway five reasons that you should not mess with the USA yeah. The collapse of the Soviet Union in the early 90s left the United States as the sole superpower in the world and it's never looked back in all aspects of the world, the United States is indeed a superpower, especially when it comes to its military might, which is unsurpassable in its strength, technological superiority, operational capabilities, and power projection across the globe. In this video, we'll take a look at the five top reasons why you wouldn't want to go against the US military establishment. The United States Air Force is the strongest in the world, not only in the number of operational aircraft, but also in technological superiority. The country currently operates a total of over 15,000 military aircraft, combining all the branches of the military service, including the US Navy, US Army, Coast Guard, and the US Marines. As of 2017, the US Air Force alone has a fleet of over 5,300 aircraft, 406 intercontinental ballistic missiles, and 170 military satellites, greater than any I'd other country. So I'd love to know how that compares to other countries, to be honest, because I'm like I'm not yeah, too knowledgeable. I don't really mm, know how much. Yeah, like... obviously, you know, the USC is a lot bigger than the UK, so our yeah. our, our fleet's going to be a lot smaller. But have you ever seen the um, the aircraft when they're flying through the sky? Any of those aircraft? No, no, no. Like... no. Fast. It's mad. Does it sound exactly like that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In the world. The USA has the largest number of stealth aircraft designed to be silent what killers and untrackable by the radar defense systems of most countries in the world. Some of these stealth that. aircraft include air superiority fighters such as the F-22 Raptor and the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter, heavy bombers such as the B-2 Spirit. In fact, the United States pioneered this technology in the 1980s with the introduction of the F-117 Nighthawk stealth attack aircraft. 
Stealth aircraft are designed to avoid detection using a variety of technologies that reduce radar reflection from ground, sea, or air-based radar. You must feel like such a boss flying, yeah. in, flying that. <laughs> they look like um, stingrays, don't yeah, they? Yeah, stingray. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they absolutely yeah, do. Yeah, that's a good. Can you imagine? Right, that? Tennis. That's yeah. Best yeah. Can, can you imagine the the feeling when you're flying them? Though it must proper give you that rush in your head, like yeah. The, the, the speed that you're going at, I think I'd be feeling nauseous. Uh, yeah, yeah, I couldn't do that, me. Yeah. I don't think it'll be easy, so... No, you'll have to train for years and years. Yeah. Probably have to go to compression chambers and everything. Thereby reducing its radar cross-section, or RCS. This revolutionary technology allows a fifth-generation aircraft, such as the F-22 Raptor, with a max takeoff weight of 83,500 pounds, to have a radar cross-section of just 0 0.0001 meters squared, about the size of a bumblebee. What's more insane is that the massive B-2 bomber also has the same radar cross-section as the F-22 Raptor. Thus, it becomes extremely difficult to track stealth aircraft. Even if the enemy spots them on their radar scopes, it's a whole other story to successfully track them and register a missile kill. The whole idea behind this technology is to break the chain in which a conventional surface-to-air missile defense system works. It's the same reason countries like China and Russia are also hard at developing their own stealth fighter, the Chengdu J-20 and the Sukhoi Su-57, respectively. These aircraft will allow the US Air Force to assert its air superiority over any battlefield of the future. And we all know that control of these skies is the biggest decider in any war. The next reason why any country going to war with the US military should think twice is because of the strength of the US Navy and its dominance over the world's ocean, especially the Navy's supercarriers. The US Navy currently operates 11 nuclear-powered Nimitz-class supercarriers, which is the largest aircraft carrier fleet in the world. The only Navy that can come close in terms of technological advancement is probably the Royal Navy of the United Kingdom, but they only have two operational carriers. The Nimitz class of carriers has a displacement of over 100,000 tons and can carry a complement of up to 70 aircraft. They're literally a floating small... Like what do, do they? What do they do? Do they carry like sh like planes over to like another country, and then they fly off them? Yeah, they can. To... They can yeah, they can fly off and, and land on there, yeah. can't they? Really? Yeah, I mean, I've not seen them when they land on there. Uh... No. Because yeah. it reminds me of it. I was watching Pearl Harbor the other week for the first time, and it was a really good film. But the like they were saying like I don't think they had, they obviously didn't have stuff like that then, and they were trying to like take off on like the ship, but it was like there was the like distance that they have was so short yeah. that they could just like fall into the, mm. yeah. the sea and yeah, it wouldn't have really the know momentum. What you're doing. Yeah. No, it's amazing when you see them it's... land back on. That's crazy that, isn't it? A town in the ocean with its own airport. Oh the Nimitz class carriers in themselves are extremely potent offensive weapons, but the way they operate in what is called the carrier strike groups makes these ships even more deadly. A carrier seldom deploys alone. There are always a fleet of surface and underwater assets surrounding the fact, them. And for the fact that that doesn't sink as well. Look at how many like there's like seventy airplanes on on top of that. Imagine how heavy that is. I know. It's, it amazes me how like these massive cruise, cruise, cruise lines, cruise lines, and everything. How the mm. it's, it was like it's like uh, I was out with uh, Dad of the week, and he was like, I don't, I don't remember. He was like looking in the sky, and he was just like baffled by an airplane. He was like, yeah. How can something that big and heavy just be yeah. in the air? I know it's true though. Yeah, but I don't, yeah. I don't understand it. Like, the, like you say, the massive cruise ships where there's about like fifty, like you know, what I mean, levels. levels yeah. And it, just how I don't honestly, I know it sounds like awful if everyone loves cruises, but I don't agree with building stuff that big. I feel like for the ocean, like it's so like it's such a bad like pollutant. I just think like. Just build smaller ones and they look nicer as well. I think they can just look a bit too much. I don't yeah. know. Have you ever been on a cruise? No. No. Maybe I've... when I'm older, like, I don't yeah. know. Like, they they actually do one, but... uh, young cruises now, party cruises. 
and you can go yeah. for just like Ooh. four days and I think you would absolutely love it. Yeah, yeah, something like that I'd love, but I, they just scare me. The only me thing with that, yeah, if you're going for like, if you're going on a cruise, you're normally on the cruise for ages, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you wouldn't really want to be on something small, you want to be on something quite... Yeah, you're going to get bored. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's but you see, people like dis like disappear on on them as well. What scares me? I watched this. I don't even know what it was called. Oh, you read too much. Do you? She absolutely cracks me up. Some of the things she comes out with, I'm just like, this is a proper sophism. <laughs> But you, you can't be too careful, and like as well, the thing is like you don't know what jurisdiction you're in. So say like you've set off from the UK, but you're like in between like I don't know like here in like the US, not maybe not that, but like you don't know like what jurisdiction you're in, and like there's no like proper like police on board necessarily. So if someone dies, or like you know it's an investigation, you don't know like what's no, going to no, happen because no. you could then go to like I don't know Mexico, and the police have to deal with you there. But then it's all like I don't know. I don't know of, because like, I think stuff. if somebody dies on board and it's a natural death, they have like freezers there, don't they? They put the body in there yeah. until it gets to the next place where the family would pick it up. Mm. But if there was like a murder... There, there could possibly be police on board every time there's like a cruise ship that's going away for that long. I don't think so. Not like any like proper like... No. There'll be, I'm sure like officers or something like that, but no proper like... My main, my main concern mm. would be like getting drunk and falling overboard. Well, that's just you, Gamer. Yeah. <laughs> you do that. It's not. It's just, it wouldn't be the first time, would it? No. <laughs> well, Boom, just strike. just wear like a life jacket to yeah, dinner at all times. Yeah. Just in case you get too drunk. <laughs> These include guided missile cruisers, a destroyer squadron, attack submarines, and other support vessels. Together, they project the power of the carrier and at the center of the group forward towards the enemy. While the carrier is carrying out its offensive role with the use of its air wing, the other ships are responsible to protect its flanks against any enemy attack. This combination of offensive and defensive strategy makes the US carrier strike group almost impenetrable. The United States Navy maintains nine such carrier strike groups, eight of which are based in the United States and one that's forward deployed to Japan. For over 50 years, this has been the principal element of US power protection, and the Nimitz class of supercarriers are at the center of it all. Despite this, the US is currently in the process of developing a new class of carriers, called the Gerald R. Ford class, intended to replace the Nimitz class ships. This new supercarrier will be even more technologically advanced and is expected to continue US dominance of the oceans well into the late 21st century. The third reason why you shouldn't fight the US military is their massive stockpile of nuclear and conventional intercontinental ballistic missiles, or ICBMs. The ICBM plays the role of the land leg in the US nuclear triad, along with the Trident submarine-launched ballistic missile, SLBM, and nuclear warheads carried on long-range strategic bombers. ICBMs are launched from ground-based missile silos, achieving high suborbital spaceflight, approximately 1,000 miles above the surface of the Earth. The body of the missile then separates from the warhead, which re-enters the atmosphere and free-falls to the assigned target at hypersonic speeds. The US military currently operates 400 ICBMs from its base in Wyoming, Montana, and North Dakota. The LGM 30G Minuteman III is the only type of ICBM that is currently operational in the US. The Minuteman III family of ICBMs were first developed in the 1960s as a response to the Soviet nuclear threat. Throughout the Cold War and beyond, these missiles have undergone constant modernization. In the last decade alone, the US military has undertaken $7 billion worth of upgrades. The rocket propulsion engines, the propellants used, the guidance system, and even the flight control surfaces have all been refurbished. The upgraded missiles are completely different from its 1960s counterparts, except for the shell. These state-of-the-art improvements and modernization programs have kept the Minuteman III system operational for over 50 years with improved reliability that supports the missile's remarkable 99% alert rate. The latest versions of the missiles have a range of over 8,000 miles, which is greater than the diameter of the Earth at 7,917.5 miles. They can carry multiple 330 kiloton nuclear warheads, which is 20 times greater than the bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Not only that, each of these warheads can be assigned to different targets independently. 
The technology is called Multiple Independently Targetable Reentry Vehicle, or MIRV, and was first developed for the Minuteman III family of missiles. So any country messing with the United States will have to deal with this awesome arsenal of firepower, which can be launched at a moment's notice. If it weren't the ICBMs or the stealth fighters raining fire down on you, it would be precision-guided munitions, or better known as smart bombs or PGMs instead. This is another big reason why not messing with the US military is a good idea. All branches of the US military use smart bombs in some forms or the other. These weapon systems are designed to be precise and hit a specific target with maximum efficiency. These bombs are so effective that during the first Gulf War, PGMs comprised only 9% of weapons fired, but accounted for 75% of all successful hits. Since then, for the US military at least, the days of normal artillery shells and unguided bombs are long gone. Nowadays, the military uses PGMs from air, ground and sea. Precision guided munitions come in various forms and use different kinds of technologies to achieve precise hits. A large majority of PGMs use the Global Positioning System, or GPS, of satellites to guide their trajectory to target. However, sometimes this becomes a problem, as GPS coverage is not always reliably available everywhere across the globe, or bad weather conditions can hinder operations. Thus, the Office of Naval Research, the Naval Surface Warfare Center, and the Army Research Laboratory have all coordinated to develop the first ever artillery-fired smart munition that will not use GPS guidance. The project is known as Moving Target Artillery Round, or MTAR for short. The MTAR shell can be guided onto stationary as well as moving targets in both land and sea, using a combination of guidance technology. The best part is that these shells can be fired from the existing M777A2 155mm towed howitzer and the M109A7 Paladin Integrated Management self-propelled 155mm artillery systems already in use by the US military. The shells will also feature an extended range of 40 to 60 miles using rocket boosters to propel them. Once finished, it will afford the US military another potent weapon system that outclasses others around the world. Lastly, the fifth and final reason why you shouldn't fight the US military is drones. We're all familiar with what an unmanned aerial vehicle or drone is and what it's supposed to do. But in recent years, the use of UAVs are steadily increasing to encompass all spheres of military operations. Never seen a drone that big. <laughs> For Christmas, I said to Darren, what do you want? And he wanted a drone because the last one I bought him, he crashed. Typical. So I bought him this drone, which is like bigger and, and better. Well, mm. big. But he, No, it's not that big. <laughs> is it better? <laughs> but he's scared to fly it because it's too fast. Because you, the one that he had, mm. you have the controls and then mm. you watched it and you, and you controlled it like this one yeah it's a screen and you control you don't look up you look on the screen to see where it is and he's yeah. scared that it's going to crash it so he's had it for what what we in now may he's had it for in fact he got it last year the year before hasn't it, it wasn't this year so he's had it for over a year and he's still not used it because he's scared of using it and there's scared. a lot of places it's, it's what it's for i know but there's a lot of places you can't use them as well yeah, so that's we, what the annoying thing is. We would have now. to go somewhere. Where can you use? Where can you use open them? Open fields. It, it, yeah, it has to be the. Um, like you know, if you fly it over a football stadium whilst there's a game on, they the, the game stops. Every all the players go inside the tunnel. Yeah. And the game stops. Yeah. Why? Because it's like because you could be illegally streaming it. Ah, that makes sense. And also, you can't fly it above like we had one and we've flown it out from our balcony. But when we were bringing it back in, yeah, our neighbour complained and said it's um, like catching me on recording. Pri or whatever. Yeah, yeah, privacy things. So we had to, and that's even though, though it's licensed yeah, and, and and you were allowed to fly it there. Yeah, because he complained. There's a complaint. It's so now we have to go to like the middle of nowhere to fly it. And, even <laughs> and there's then, like how free you doing that? Yeah, and even then when we did, um, we got a note under the room, the hotel room door to say please don't fly your drone. So that's all just not after. So they're, they're basically but, pointless now yeah. because you can't use them anywhere. anywhere no. Yeah, so. Yeah. But also around the corner from our house is a tank. A big green tank. You yeah, I've never seen that before, it but I've seen it. photos. Mm, yeah. So it's really, literally where the... Uh, oh, it's like where Albert's is, isn't it? No, it's down the other end. So you come down uh, Burton Road and make a route to Lapwing Lane where the Metropolitan Pub is. Yeah. 
and you go maybe three roads up and it's just parked there on the right hand side just a big was it like an tent. old or is it like one that was like used or just... i don't i don't know where, how long it's been there or who's who it belongs to but it's just a big green tank just parked up mm. and it's not moved for years i might nick it i'd like to see you try yeah. <laughs> Operations and the US military is the pioneering spirit behind it. At first, used only for surveillance missions, drones were quickly weaponized after the 9 11 attacks and have been extensively used by the US military in the war against terror as an offensive weapon platform. It's forecasted that over the next decades, the US is in line to purchase over 1,000 combat drones of various classifications. Some of them, like the Lockheed Martin RQ-170 Sentinel and the Boeing MQ-25 Stingray, are already in the final stages of development and once finished, will provide the US military with state-of-the-art platforms capable of multi-role operations, ranging from attack missions to aerial refueling. Drone technology has reached such heights today that a single UAV can loiter miles above the surface of the Earth for hours, waiting for the target to show its head and sticking with impunity. This capability will allow all the services under the US military to reduce its dependency on manned platforms, thereby reducing the risks during future combat operations. These five weapon systems make the US military extremely dangerous for any adversary looking to get into a conflict with them. In a conventional warfare setting, it's almost impossible to beat the US military machine. That's why modern enemies of the United States are employing more and more asymmetric warfare strategies against the mighty US military. Despite that, the US military juggernaut is hand down the most powerful military complex in the world today and probably will be for decades to come. That's all we have for you today, folks. Thanks for sticking around till the end. If you like the video and want to stay up to date on cool military stuff like this, then click the subscribe button and also click the notification bell and you'll be the first to know the next time we release a video. Thanks for... It is pretty crazy, isn't it? Crazy. I probably uh, probably might just leave it now, actually, then, to be honest. <laughs> leave what? Probably won't mess with them anymore. No, you won't, you, you won't mess with the USA. <laughs> you were thinking of it, but I reckon I could put up a good fight, but... <laughs> yeah, they've got, they've got a huge uh, military. Mm. A lot bigger it's than that. It's pretty other. scary how, like, missile scary, first of all, how it can literally go around the whole world. I know. That's by what? And it, like, the U if they wanted to, I know what, like, other countries as well, like like the UK and Russia and stuff like that, they could literally just end the world. Yeah, just wipe, yeah. Up, wipe us Fully. all off. It takes and that's one scary. It takes one lunatic. You just have to lose. Just the press clock. that red button. Yeah, yeah. And, and and that's it. It's probably a bit more complicated than that, mm. but I don't think there's just a red button out there that just yeah. ends the world. But. No, I understand that, but it it is likely that there is a lunatic that could just wipe. Do you reckon off? in the president's office there is actual a red button? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got to be something. Yeah. In, in most nations, I think there's the, the red button. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, we just that all you could down. press. Just, just have a mental breakdown. That's what I'm saying. Who, who says no? Yeah, yeah. How do you stop it? Yeah. No. You come down. <laughs> <laughs> am I going to press it? Am I going to not? Yeah. <laughs> Record yourself. Eeny, meeny, Record yourself. Meeny, tea, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, literally. Uh, yeah, anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe button, and we'll catch you on the next one. Don't Cheers. forget about the Patreon. Do not forget Patreon about the Patreon. Well. Yes. Yeah. At least one video a week. Yes. Hopefully more. Yeah. Hopefully. We'll Hopefully. try and keep we'll try and keep up to date. Yeah, we've got Sophie on there doing her um, Sophieisms. Yes. Yeah. Just <laughs> So if you want to go watch a single Sophie video of her on her own, check out the Patreon. All on yeah. my own, all by myself. Yeah, yeah, if you want me and me and Gainer off the video then you can go to Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> Never. Yeah. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the video and we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. Bye. Bye.